If you're a music fan, you've probably heard the song Black Betty in one form or another. It's a song that has had many different iterations over the years. Maybe you're familiar with the Ram Jam version, maybe the Spiderbait version, or maybe you're old school, maybe you prefer the Lead Belly version. Lead Belly, of course, being the legendary blues musician who first popularized the tune in 1939. The first known recording, as sung by James Ironhead Baker, dates back to 1933. So we know that the song is at least that old. However, it has been speculated that the song has roots in older material. Much older material, according to one YouTube commenter who we will simply call Fred. You see, according to Fred here, the song originated as a British marching tune. Yeah, that got your attention, didn't it? Here's his original comment. This song is much older than this. This was a British Army marching song and refers to the muskets carried by British soldiers, which was called the Black Betty because of its black painted stock. Its replacement had a brown oiled stock and was referred to as the Brown Bess. Black Betty had a child, the child went wild, refers to the muskets firing a ball, which was not very accurate as rear firing lines often shot the forward lines on accident. Birmingham refers to Birmingham, England, where the muskets were made, not Alabama. There are many references to this in literature, as far back as the early 1700s. I wanted to make this video because there's a lot to unpack in this comment. And the thing is, normally, I wouldn't bother. After all, it's just a dumb comment on YouTube. And those are a dime a dozen, so who cares? If I made a video for every dumb comment on YouTube that I saw, I would never have time to do anything else. So, why am I making this video? Well, because this particular comment has over 4,000 likes on a video that has over 2 million views, meaning it has touched the lives of at least 4,000 people, but probably more. So, in this case, I'm making a special exception. So first of all, let's address the notion that there was ever such a musket as the Black Betty. But before we do that, we first need to address some things about the Brown Bess. This is a brown bess, or more specifically, this is the short land pattern second model brown bess, the iteration of the weapon that would have been used during the American Revolution. The brown bess was the standard issue weapon used by most branches of the British military for well over a hundred years. It saw service from 1722 to 1838, and it went through several changes over the course of its career, but the basic firing mechanism remained the same. It's a flintlock. And according to at least one researcher, the name actually has nothing at all to do with the color of the stock. Brown is an 18th century slang term meaning dull or plain, while Bess is a nickname often prescribed to, well, women of ill repute, shall we say. But enough about the Brown Bess, you want to hear about the Black Betty. Was such a firearm co-opted by the British Army at any point prior to the introduction of the Brown Bess? Well, no. You see, prior to the introduction of the Brown Bess in the early 1720s, the British Army didn't really have a standardized firearm. While they would have been using more or less the same firing mechanisms, the exact designs of the muskets would have varied from regiment to regiment, as they would have been commissioned by the individual officers of the regiments, and therefore they would be custom made according to the tastes of those officers. So could there have been a regiment at one point in time that used muskets with black painted stocks? Maybe. I don't have the resources to definitively say no. But this idea that there was ever some sort of ubiquitous precursor to the Brown Bess, universally referred to as the Black Betty, is dubious at best. While the term Black Betty does exist in the 18th century, it almost always refers to whiskey and not a firearm. Now we move on to the second part of Frank's comment. Black Betty had a child, the child went wild, refers to the musket firing a ball, which was not very accurate as rear firing lines often shot the forward lines on accident. This part, I can say with a fairly high degree of certainty, is unequivocally false. Yes, smoothbore muskets are relatively inaccurate compared to rifled firearms. But if your rear rank is regularly shooting your front rank, you are doing something very wrong. The only way this would be possible would be if your rear rank is standing way too far back, and the British Army did not operate in this way. This is basically just regurgitating the age-old misunderstanding of everyone in the past was stupid, so it just be like that sometimes, I guess. 
In reality, proper military procedure, according to the 1764 Manual of Arms, calls for the rear rank to step up and place their left elbow against the front rank's right shoulder. Therefore, when they go to fire, their barrel will always be clear of the man in front of them. So if you're firing a volley and you're in the front rank, maybe you might get singed a little bit by the, uh, the flash in the pan of the man behind you, but uh, in all likelihood, you're not going to be shot in the back. Unless, of course, your officer happens to be Donald Sutherland. And now, at last, we come to the last part of Frank's comment. Birmingham refers to Birmingham, England, where the muskets were made, not Alabama. This part can at least be partially substantiated. A vast quantity of the iron used in the brown vests, in metal components such as the lock plate and the barrel, were produced in Birmingham. However, once these components were produced, they would then be shipped to places like the Tower of London, where they would be inspected. And then final production of the weapons would be handed off to local gunsmiths in London, who would put the finishing touches on the pieces, such as the brass furnishings and the wooden stocks. So Birmingham was not solely responsible for the production of these weapons. So if Black Betty was not a British marching song and does not refer to a musket, then what then is the true meaning of the song? Well, there's no clear consensus. After interviewing James Ironhead Baker, the lead singer in the original recording, the two men who produced the recording, John and Alan Lomax, seemed convinced that the Black Betty of the song was in reference to a whip. Other early performers of the song, such as Moses Platts, otherwise known as Clear Rock, insisted that the song was in reference to a specific person. In this instance, that person supposedly is a woodcutter who threw out her hip while chopping down a tree. We may never know which one of these explanations, if either, represents the true meaning of the song. Naturally, every artist who covers a song is going to carry their own personal interpretation. But as far as I'm concerned, both of these explanations are way more plausible than the song originating as a British marching tune. There's just no hard evidence to support that. So that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed. God save the king.